and gentlemen, I am the one and only DJ Storms. And it's that time of the week again, as we are here on March 2nd. Yes, it is March already. 2018 for the lightning flash update. You already know who I am, Mr. Controversy. And the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. And we got a lot to talk about here on the Lightning Flash update for the first Lightning Flash update in March as we inch closer and closer and closer to WrestleMania 34. I got the weekly show reviews. Um, pretty, pretty up and down week for wrestling. It had some good moments. It had some quite shitty moments, which I will go over each and every single one of them. And I got some major news on some certain plans for WrestleMania regarding John Cena. Anyway, let's get into the weekly show reviews. So Raw started off with Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, God knows why. And they just went on and on, or Alexa went on and on, and Mickey James just stood there like a puppet and didn't say anything. Meanwhile, Bliss was going on and on about this heelish promo. I'm the goddess of WWE. Sasha Banks should have won the Elimination Chamber. You don't agree with me? You're an idiot. What else do I got to say? And I just want to know some. Why is WWE already promoting Asuka versus Alexa Bliss? Asuka never chose who she's facing at WrestleMania. I also got some news on that as well, which I'm going to rip into. So anyway, Nia Jax came out, attacked uh, Asuka. Bailey and Sasha came out to help. Why are Bailey and Sasha all buddy-buddy again? Why are they coming out to help Asuka after they just went through war inside the first ever Women's Elimination Chamber match? No consistency with the storylines whatsoever. And, uh, surprise, surprise, it was a six-woman tag team match. Kill me now. I couldn't care less about this match as Asuka made Mickey James tap out, Bailey walked off, blah, 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 and we got a rematch from Elimination Chamber set for next week between Nia, Jax, and Asuka. Cena then cut a very good promo as he addressed his WrestleMania status, and he put out a WrestleMania challenge to The Undertaker in a very good promo, and I honestly thought that The Undertaker was going to come out right then and there, or they, were, or they were at least going to wait till next week, but Cena said that that match is not happening because it is impossible. He doesn't make the matches, so he decides to go to SmackDown Live, and sure enough, he showed up on SmackDown Live the following night. Bray Wyatt, God, I, I love the guy. The, the guy, the guy's amazing at what he does, but I, I can't even stress how many times he's been treated like shit. Bray Wyatt destroyed Heath Slater and Rhino, and apparently he's still coming after Matt Hardy. I thought that would have been the end, or at least Wyatt should have won at Elimination Chamber. I think I called Matt Hardy on my Elimination Chamber rundown, and quite frankly, I don't even care who I called. Because the match turned out to be absolutely a waste of time. Based on what the crowd were doing, they were throwing around beach balls and chanting for Rusev Day. I would have done the same thing. You guys know how I feel about The Miz, but he cut a fantastic promo about WrestleMania. And he was going on a tangent about Kurt Angle disrespecting The Miz. Just saying, might. Might, 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 might. You don't tell the Intercontinental Champion, might. I made this championship more important than the Universal title. I like The Miz's attitude, but WWE, please, if you're going to have The Miz talk like this, and then you're going to have him cheat to win, like, you're basically booking him as a loudmouth with no balls. Give this guy's character some balls, and then maybe I'll get behind him. Eight Intercontinental Championship reigns, and I have only cared about one of them. What does that tell you? Rollins then came out and defeated The Miz in a great match with a frog splash that would make Eddie Guerrero proud. And then Balor came out, and The Miz Taraj attacked Finn Balor, Gals and Anderson helped Balor, and then Balor defeated The Miz in another good match. So I have some news on the Intercontinental Championship going into Mania, which I will address. Then we had a Roman Reigns promo. Apparently, Lesnar was a no-show, and quite frankly, I would have done the same thing as Lesnar if I was to be put in a program with Roman Reigns again. Now, 
I'm not sure if you guys know about this, but apparently I was scrolling through Twitter and I clicked the search button and I actually found something very, very interesting. Apparently, someone started the hashtag NotMyMainEvent for WrestleMania 34 with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Oh, now, I don't know who started it. I have absolutely no idea who started it, but whoever did, by all means, you deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. That's all I'm going to say about that. Whoever created that deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. And then WWE goes on a tangent and tries to make Roman Reigns the courageous babyface going into WrestleMania 34. Like, who's, who's going to believe this? It, it, who's going to believe this other than the five and six-year-olds who don't know any better and the women who have Roman Reigns posters plastered all over their bedroom wall? Like, who else is going to believe it? No one. The majority of the crowd booed him still. There's absolutely nothing, nothing that can get that guy cheered going into WrestleMania 34. And if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, I'm going to be sitting right here, nice, nice and pretty, with my Uso snapback. And I'm going to watch as Roman Reigns walks down that long ass aisle at WrestleMania and he's booed. And by God, those boos are going to be the most satisfying thing in the world. And I'm going to sit here once again, the Raw After Mania, and listen to the crowd chant, Fuck you, Roman. And it's going to feel like music to my ears. Moving on. We had a decent match between The Bar and Titus Worldwide. Two out of three falls match for the titles. And then The Bar talked about how there is no team left to beat, which is obviously a teaser to insert the revival into the mix. Elias used a fire extinguisher on Braun Strowman. That actually turned out to be useless. I got some news on Braun Strowman as well. Apparently, they're holding back on Braun Strowman because of the Roman Reigns steroid situation. And if Lesnar's a no-show at WrestleMania 34, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, they're keeping Strowman around to take either Roman's place or Lesnar's place. WrestleMania is falling apart at the scene, man. And then we actually had a decent promo to end the show. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle said he apparently lied and he was on pneumonia. And then Ronda Rousey said, okay, we've addressed everything except for the slap that you gave me. Now, apologize to me if you want to move on or I'm going to rip your arm out of your socket. And sure enough, the crowd was chanting, rip it out, which I was very pleased at. Steph apologized and then Triple H punched Kurt Angle right in the face. And apparently there was a picture of Kurt's face and it looked like he was constipated. And I laughed my ass off the first time I saw that picture. So it looks like Raw is back to being a two to three highlight show. But regardless, I'm very much liking the way that they're presenting Ronda Rousey, and I'm very much looking forward to the match between her, Kurt Angle, Triple H, and Stephanie McMahon come April 8th. On the SmackDown Live, it was actually um, a better show than I thought it was going to be. Cena, uh, Cena started off the show. He said he wanted to be the WWE Champion, and then Shane McMahon came out. Daniel Bryan then came out. They went back and forth. And Daniel Bryan made AJ Styles versus Cena in the main event of SmackDown Live, in which Cena won. If he won, then he would be added to the WWE Championship match at Fastlane. And sure enough, the crowd was chanting Rusev Day for the entire show. Baron Corbin then defeated Sami Zayn, and it was a decent match, but the crowd, they were chanting Rusev Day. They were doing... uh. Everything else besides watching the match for the first six, seven minutes of this match, they really gotta get they really gotta get everything together. If Rusev is if Rusev is getting more cheers than the main event talent, then that tells you right there that Rusev should be in the main event scene. But why is he not pushed? Why is he not pushed? Because it was not in WWE's plans. If you are not in WWE's plans, you could pretty much consider yourself. Done. 
done until WWE feels like it's right to use you. By the way, I'm going off what I see on television. And sure enough, what I see on television is ringing through. And it's ringing true. Ziggler then attacked Owens with a nasty super kick right to the back of the neck. It looked like it legitimately hurt. Corbin then won the match with the end of days. And then Ziggler attacked Owens and Corbin. Daniel Bryan then went home. And then Shane McMahon... Shane McMahon then uh, had a little conversation with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn backstage, and it ended with Sami Zayn saying these exact words, and I quote, It never ends. It never ends with this guy. And um, I tweeted out that specific quote, and I said Roman Reigns in a nutshell. And you can't tell me any different. It never ends. It never ends with this guy. Ruby Riot then defeated Naomi. It was a decent match, decent for what it was. They're building up Ruby Riot for the match with Charlotte at Fastlane, which should also be a decent match. New Day and Brizongo have a moment with Josh Dumel, which was um who was one of the um, people accused of steroids, along with Mark Wahlberg and Roman Reigns, of course. New Day and the Usos then renewed their rivalry, and the Usos cut an amazing promo about how they were left off WrestleMania, always put on the pre-show, always overlooked, and now they're finally going to get their moment as the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. And then the New Day, they fired back even bigger than that. Big E saying, you know, we earned our spot here, we didn't need our daddies in order to get to the top, we hosted WrestleMania while you were in the back and catering. And then all of a sudden, the Bludgeon Brothers came out. And I was smiling ear to ear when these two came out. The Bludgeon Brothers got into the ring with their huge mallets. And the New Day and the Usos, they walked off. They walked off. So, if my calculations are correct at this rate, the Bludgeon Brothers should, they should be added to the tag team title match at Fastlane. Orton and Rude had a promo, and I like what they did with Orton, saying that the United States title is the only title Orton has never held, and it just so happens Bobby Rude is the one holding the championship. This should be a very, very, very good wrestling match. Shinsuke Nakamura then defeated Aiden English. John Cena then had a great match with AJ Styles. Now, I was actually thinking that John Cena was going to lose this match based on the confrontation that he had with Nakamura before the match even got started. And then I thought Cena was going to face Nakamura at Fastlane. Matter of fact, I think that would have been a better decision in order to sell some tickets for Fastlane. You got four championship matches right now, and I think you have, you have enough people in the main event title match as it is. If you put Cena in there with Nakamura, that's, pre that's a pretty damn good five-match lineup you got there. And then you can insert... You know, a little minor feud in there, a little pre-show match here, and you pretty much have a pretty good pay-per-view, in my eyes at least. But no, they had Cena beat Styles in a great match. I think that that was the wrong decision. Cena's going to fast lane, and then chaos broke out as everyone started attacking everyone in sight. Uh, Cena with AAs, Corbin with end of days, Ziggler with super kicks. It was just complete bedlam. And Chaos ended SmackDown Live. Um, I enjoyed the main event. I enjoyed the promo between the New Day and the Usos. Um, and I enjoyed, to a certain extent, the match between Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin. 205 Live and wow. 205 Live. It's only, it's only been a month. It's only been a month, guys. And the progression of 205 Live is already starting to show. It's already starting to show, and I could not be more prouder to watch 205 Live. And I dropped my pen. What are you going to do? I do one take, and that's it. I ain't, I ain't editing that out at all. Who cares? Anyway, 205 Live. 205 Live. This show was probably the best show in the last month. For 205 Live. You know, every single show has had its great moments. But this show, this show had to be one of the best. 
Cedric Alexander and TJP, they put on a very good match to start off the show. So much so, so, much so that the crowd was actually chanting for TJP. I believe, uh, I believe that TJP is from Los Angeles, California. That's why they were chanting TJP, because they, they were in his home state. I was actually afraid that they were going to boo Cedric Alexander, but they didn't. They were into both men. Both men started off very slow, technical wrestling, and then it slowly started to pick up. We had some great back and forth, some great strike exchanges. Cedric Alexander pulling off some great high-flying moves. I love that neuralizer. And the right man won. Cedric Alexander is moving on to the semifinals. Cedric Alexander with a brutal lumbar check. And TJP got some height on that lumbar check. Cedric Alexander defeats TJP in a very good match. And he's going on to the semifinals. Buddy Murphy versus Mustafa Ali will take place next week. Very much looking forward to that. And Mark Andrews versus Drew Gulak will also take place next week. Now, I know for a fact Mustafa Ali is advancing. Because Mustafa Ali, as I keep on saying, is the AJ Styles of 205 Live. But the match between Mark Andrews and Drew Gulak, you could swing either way with that. You could really swing either way with that match. Mark Andrews, obviously, he's got a great, great moveset. He's got a very fun-loving character. Mark Andrews is probably the superior wrestler in terms of work ethic or in cruiserweight ethic, as I like to call it. Because Mark Andrews really embodies what the cruiserweights should be about. Not saying Drew Gulak doesn't. Drew Gulak is a very good performer. Very entertaining character. But Mark Andrews, since Mark Andrews got that victory over former cruiserweight champion Tozawa, I would expect Mark Andrews to go just one more match further. And I think Mark, Mark Andrews versus uh, Mustafa Ali would be a great match. Same thing with Drew Gulak. Matter of fact, I said Mustafa Ali and Drew Gulak had one of the best matches in 205 Live history. 21 minutes. 21 minutes in that 2 out of 3 falls match back in July. I'm still talking about it. That match put Mustafa and Gulak on the map. So you could swing either way between Mark Andrews and Gulak. Then in the main event, Roderick Strong and Kalisto. God. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What they were trying to do out there, I'm not sure what their mindset was, but it looked like they were legitimately trying to hurt each other. The match between Roderick Strong and Kalisto, they went back and forth. We had suicide dives, Hurricane Ron is into the barricade, Roderick Strong suplexing Kalisto on the announce table, Kalisto doing a huge high-risk takedown from the top, Roderick Strong with a backbreaker combination into the end of heartache. For the win on Kalisto. And we're getting Roderick Strong versus Cedric Alexander. That's the match I originally predicted for the finals before. Before all of this was even revealed. I originally pitched Cedric and Atami, but then Strong advanced. Then I pitched Cedric and Strong, and then Strong is in the same bracket as Cedric Alexander. And it's going to be a great damn match. But now, this opens up the door for Mustafa. And... If the match on 205 Live a, a month ago was great, you can bet that if Cedric and Mustafa are put on the grand stage of WrestleMania, you give them 15, 20 minutes, they're going to have another great match. Even better. Great episode, of, uh, great episode of 205 Live. And we had another great episode of NXT to follow that. Velveteen Dream defeated Tyler Bate in a very good match. I uh, liked the chemistry between these two. Although, I was actually very surprised... I was very surprised that they had this match on NXT television because this, this right here, this is the type of match that you would say for an NXT TakeOver special. I actually thought it was going to be Dream and Bait at NXT TakeOver. But they gave it to us here. And, you know, I wouldn't mind the rematch. I would like to see Tyler Bate defeat Velveteen Dream and then have the final match, maybe in a 2 out of 3 falls match, maybe at NXT TakeOver. I would not mind a Velveteen Dream Tyler Bate feud. Velveteen Dream 1, Purple Rainmaker, very good match. Adam Cole then defeated Cesar Bononi, and he actually fooled Cesar Bononi. He said, you know, this is the NXT Breakout Star of the Year. Give Cesar Bononi a round of applause. And then he said he wanted Bononi in the Undisputed Era, but Adam Cole did a complete 180 and said, hell no. Hit a Shining Wizard to the back. Adam Cole defeats Cesar Bononi. 
Next week, we got TM61 versus AOP in the first round of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Should be a very good match. Shayna Baszler then defeated Kyrie Sane. I actually thought Kyrie Sane was going to win this because I thought they were going to set up for Kyrie Sane versus Ember Moon at NXT Takeover New Orleans, which would be a very good match. But Shayna Baszler won with the Carafuda Clutch, I believe they call it, if I'm not mistaken. Mar Morrow says it very fast. I'm not saying he's not a good commentator. He just says it in a very fast tone that I almost can't understand it. But the Carafuda Clutch, I believe it is. And Kyrie Sane tapped out. Shayna then called out Ember Moon, saying that she's going to either leave with Ember Moon's title or Ember Moon's arm. So we should be getting a rematch for the NXT Women's Championship down the line, and I'm very happy that they are not treating Ember Moon like a transitional champion. Almas and Zelina Vega then spoke about Johnny Gargano. Zelina went on to say that Almas did a clean sweep on Johnny Gargano, and then Almas took the mic and said, he's the champion, and he made Johnny Wrestling Johnny jobless. So obviously they're poking the bear, they're poking the beast with Johnny Gargano. And then all of a sudden, Aleister Black came out like I was hoping that he would. Aleister Black came out to people singing his theme song, and just like the booze for Roman Reigns, that is music to my ears. I could listen to that all day. Killian Dane then came out before Aleister Black could even get a word out of his mouth. And then all of a sudden, I heard Killian Dane, he was screaming, You're in my path! And then all of a sudden, he sparked a brawl between himself and Black as Almas and Vega watched from the stage. And Dane did a huge crossbody, cutting Aleister Black in half. Zane, um, did I say Zane? I meant Dane. Dane then stood tall. So I'm assuming... We are going to be getting Aleister Black versus Killian Dane in the near future in a number one contenders match to see who's going to face Almas at TakeOver. But all in all, very good episode of NXT. Very much looking forward to what they do with Aleister Black, Almas, and Dane. Now, on to the news, rumors, and reports. And is there really any other way to start off the news, rumors, and reports section than with a shout-out? To Mr. Slice Wrestling, of course. Follow him on Twitter, at Slice Wrestling. So, this was a direct tweet from Slice Wrestling's Twitter handle. And I quote, We have confirmed that Bobby Lashley has officially signed his WWE contract and is expected to begin appearing on WWE programming in the near future. Now, Lesnar leaving back to UFC after WrestleMania 34, was a big deciding factor for WWE to pull the trigger on signing Lashley. So, this is a bittersweet moment here. I am very, very, very disappointed that we are not going to get to see the Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley match. But I'm very, very happy that Lashley's coming back because Lashley, he could really add a newfound sense of intensity to WWE programming, in which I'm assuming he's going to be put on Monday Night Raw. Very much looking forward to seeing Lashley in the main event scene on Monday Night Raw. I got a report from PW Insider, and it has reported that WWE will indeed go with Alexa Bliss versus Asuka at WrestleMania 34. I don't know why the hell WWE is going with this when A, they already showcased it on Raw, B, Alexa Bliss is doing absolutely nothing holding that Raw Women's Championship. C, you're turning down a match with Charlotte, of all people. Who does Charlotte have to go up against uh, against that WrestleMania? The only person that comes to mind when I think Charlotte and WrestleMania is Asuka. Maybe Becky Lynch. Maybe Becky Lynch. I would not mind seeing Becky versus Charlotte at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's title. I wouldn't mind that at all. But since Asuka won the Rumble... She got to choose who she faces. She never choosed anyone. She hasn't choosed anyone yet. Why are they all, all of a sudden promoting Asuka versus Alexa Bliss when Asuka has not chosen who she is facing? Yet again, another logic gap on Monday Night Raw. 
surprise, surprise. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm shocked that they did this. But I mean, come on. Come on. Charlotte versus Asuka is the money match for the women on WrestleMania's card. No one's going to care about Anaya Jax versus Alexa Bliss. If anything, it should have been Bailey and Sasha. And I do have some news on that as well. Because according to Wrestling Observer Radio, WWE officials are um, currently planning the highly anticipated match of Bailey versus Sasha Banks at WrestleMania 34. But it would have it would have had much more intensity. It would have had, it would have had much 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 more interest in it if it had the Raw Women's Championship, because Sasha would have gone full fledged heel. Bailey would be the underdog babyface. And Sasha Banks could get what she rightfully deserves. A WrestleMania moment and a Raw Women's Championship reign that is over a month. You're out here telling me that officials are planning Bailey versus Sasha Banks, which is fine. I'm all for it. But why doesn't it have the Raw Women's Championship? It makes absolutely no sense that WWE would not book this match as a Raw Women's Championship match. Matter of fact, this is only going to generate less interest for the match. This is only going to go off the simple fact that Sasha just turned heel. Yeah, she just turned heel. Why not give her a legitimate reason to turn heel? Other than, you know, Bailey's beating you over and over again. Why not give Bailey the title and Bailey can hold the title till WrestleMania? Meanwhile, Sasha is, you know, you know, all all pissed over the fact that Bailey won the chamber. And all of a sudden, boom. He'll turn. I'm sick of you overshadowing me. Sasha Banks wins the title at Mania. But no, you want to go with Asuka and Alexa Bliss when Asuka's just going to destroy Bliss anyway. At least give me a competitive match. Come on. Moving on before a vein pops in my head. So according to Wrestling Observer Radio and Dave Meltzer, WWE officials are now planning a triple threat bout between Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 34. I like this decision very, very, very much. Because A... Seth Rollins versus The Miz versus Finn Balor was a fantastic main event last May. Number two, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor would be a great addition to the Intercontinental Championship, depending on who they give it to. Number three, it gets the title off The Miz. Number four, it gives each of them something important to do at WrestleMania. And they're already setting up for it. I can, I can like see it right now. Number one contenders match between Finn Balor and Seth Rollins goes to a double count out, double disqualification, double pin, double something. And boom, Kurt Angle makes it. Triple threat match for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. And we're going to get a great match. We're going to get a great match. Possibly the match of the night. Possibly the match of the night because it's not going to be Lesnar and Reigns. It's not going to be Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss or Asuka and Alexa Bliss. It could be AJ Styles and Nakamura, but if there's any match on that card that could possibly rival that WWE Championship match, it's an Intercontinental title triple threat match. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they book that match and how it all plays out. So, my final report of the day. According to Wrestle Votes by way of Cage Side Seats, this is actually a double report. And there are a couple of reports that contradict each other. John Cena versus The Undertaker for WrestleMania is supposedly going to take over SmackDown Live as its building ground. So they're going to build The Undertaker-John Cena feud over on SmackDown Live. However, however, Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated is contradicting that report from Russell Votes. He is saying that Rey Mysterio was backstage at SmackDown Live this past Tuesday finalizing a deal with the WWE 
And he is now rumored to be John Cena's opponent at WrestleMania 34. So we got two reports contradicting each other. Now, I'm not really sure who is right and who is wrong, but based on if uh, Rey Mysterio was backstage at SmackDown Live, you know, it, you could go either way with that. He could be finalizing a deal with 205 Live, or he could be finalizing a deal with SmackDown Live. I mean, I really wouldn't mind Rey Mysterio wrestling John Cena. I mean, after all, John Cena and Rey Mysterio, they have a rich history. They have a very rich history. Rey Mysterio could build it off as, I want to get redemption for what Cena did to me back in 2011 when he took the WWE title from me. Y you know, you could build it off. You could build it off something very, very interesting. I'm very much looking forward to um, if this is true or not. As far as The Undertaker goes, Rey Mysterio, nice backup plan. Nice backup plan for The Undertaker because, you know, at this rate, Undertaker's at a stage in his career where he can't really go. Can't really go as well as he used to do. You don't believe me? Just watch that match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania last year. That match was actually tough to watch. I was actually told that The Miz was actually backstage crying over it. Because he was just so disgusted by it. And I, I'm, not, I'm not making that up. I just want to let you know, I am not making that, I'm not making that up. I've heard multiple sources say that exact same thing. But Rey Mysterio, if you needed a big opponent for John Cena at WrestleMania, by all means, go with Rey Mysterio. By all means, go with Rey Mysterio. It gives Rey Mysterio something important to do. I wouldn't mind seeing the match. If you can't get The Undertaker, there's really nothing else you can do. But I'm going to be hoping. I'm going to be hoping for The Undertaker. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the Lightning Flash update on March 2nd, 2018. I would like to thank each and every one of you who tuned into this video. Do not forget to like. Do not forget to comment. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at D-Dog. Or I almost said D-Dog. At the DJ Storms. Do not forget to check out the Lightning Flash update next week and the rundown for SmackDown Live exclusive pay per view Fastlane, which I will be posting on March 10th. And as you may have known for the past number of weeks, do not forget the DJ Storms production crew will be taking over the East Coast during the independent wrestling event at Felician University on March 24th. Rescue Mania, and I will be interviewing the mainstream wrestlers of the show. You never know who's going to show up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. Thank you for joining me here on the Lightning Flash Update, and you have a great weekend.